Yo, what is going on everybody? Shri Kanasa here. So how to 10x your sales with proper Google Shopping feed optimization. Now this is something a lot of people are basically blind about because they don't even know what Google Shopping feed optimization even means. Meaning a lot of people don't spend a lot of time on the specific Google Shopping feed which is open on my screen right now. And they mostly focus on adding products to their Shopify store, maybe focusing on Google Ads dashboard, trying to optimize the ads itself. But one thing people don't understand or just don't have enough knowledge about is that the Google Shopping feed app which is installed on your Shopify store, which is again, what's on my screen right now, is one of the most important key factors to your success when it comes to Google Ads. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how to optimize this app and fill up the missing links so that you can get the best results possible with your Google Shopping ads. So this is one video you're definitely not gonna wanna miss and watch until the end. But without wasting any more time, let's just jump into the optimization. So after you install your Google Shopping feed app and go on to the specific dashboard assuming that you've set up everything and if you haven't check out some of the free videos on my channel tutorials on how to set up google shopping ads from start to finish but after you've set everything up with the google shopping feed app on the manage products page this is exactly what you should see you should see a list of the products that are currently shown on the bottom here and the list should show all of the products that are currently available on your shopify store if it doesn't something's wrong something's not set up properly you may want to chat with the owners of the app by contacting support. But after setting up your app, you should see all of the products. And there are several things that you need to properly set up in the settings in order to really get the best bang out of your buck when it comes to running Google ads. So the first thing we want to do is focus on the settings tab over here. So you want to hover over it. There are several things we'll be doing from the settings. The first thing is basically clicking on the first thing which says sync settings from Shopify. This is the first thing I always set up whenever I create a brand new Google ads store because this is where a lot of the settings are determined as to what what gets sent to the Google Shopping ads in the first place. So as you can see, you'll see all of these specific things over here, all of this information. Here is the most important information. So first things first, you need to make sure that all of the columns on your screen match mine. So the first thing is you need to make sure all products is chosen instead of choosing collections because you want all your products getting synced to your Google ads account. The second thing for product titles, I don't like to use the search engine optimized titles. I rather would use the product titles, meaning the titles that you set at the very top in the beginning. Search engine optimized titles are those that are set at the very bottom. And if you want more details as to how to set up the search engine optimized title, I made a video on this specifically that I'll link to you guys in the description. But search engine optimized titles are basically for the Google organic searches. The main thing I would always do is make sure my product titles are sent because those are the ones that I make sure are fully optimized with SEO keywords. Moving on now to the product description. Again, the same thing. You want to make sure that the first option is chosen instead of the second one because I optimize my product description more than I optimize my search engine optimized description. And this is followed by the variants. I always leave it at all variants because we want every single variant sent instead of just having one specific variant. And in fact, what I've been noticing is products with multiple variants tend to do a little bit well because all of these variants act like single products. Now, what does this mean exactly? Well, when each specific variant goes inside an auction, each variant competes in the auction individually instead of in competing together. So what that means is if one variant doesn't win in the auction, there are chances that some other variant could still win that auction and get shown when somebody searches for a specific keyword related to that product. So that's why variants are good because you're kind of broadening your scope for finding success with that product. Now, moving on for variant title and title, I just like to leave it yet. Yes, because if you read what it says, it says that basically choosing this makes the variant option name appear after the product title. For example, you sell a black pencil and a red pencil. The color black and red will appear after the name of the title with this option. So we want that. Now moving on to inventory management. We just like to keep it at all because again, this is not too important. Inventory policy, just keep it at follow. And for product image option, now this is the important one. You want to make sure that this is unchecked because we don't want to use the second image for products with no variants. We only want to use the first image 
and the variant images themselves, not the second image. Now that's followed by submit additional image. We want to check both of these boxes because they're important. But once you've done all these changes, you want to click the resync button so that the Google Shopping feed accurately syncs all of the data from Shopify and sends it correctly to Google Ads dashboard. So that's the main reason as to why we even do these steps. But now we want to move on to the right side. We don't want to really mess with all of this over here on the right. But what we want to focus on is this specific section right here, which has default settings. This is literally one of the most important things you can change with Google Shopping Feed. And what I'm referring to is the default Google product category. Now, if you run a general store like I recommend to on my channel, choosing specific categories for each product will become a really painful and long experience simply because you will have to go one by one, choose a category for each product on your store. We don't want to do that. Instead, what you would rather do is choose a default Google product category in this section right here. And if you're in a niche store, this is really easy for you because you can just choose the category which is within your specific niche. But if you run a general store, what I've been noticing personally is that choosing the home and garden niche as the main default category is the best way to go. Now, of course, with the general store, you're not gonna always add products in this niche and that's completely fine because with this specific category, we're just kind of giving Google a general layout as to what categories we want Google to associate our product with. But Google also has a brain of its own and an algorithm that is really smart. So what that does is all of the SEO optimized keywords that you'll use in the titles and the descriptions Google basically monitors those keywords and then re-chooses these categories according to those keywords. So if you sell black pencils and blue pencils, but specifically mechanical pencils, and if you include those main keywords such as mechanical pencils or a pencil in your description and title often, what Google will do is Google will crawl through your entire product page. It will determine that you're selling a pencil and then it will choose the appropriate category for you. So that's one of the benefits when it comes to Google. But choosing one category to begin with is also a good option just to kind of get Google working on the right path. I've tested this with having no category chosen versus having category chosen. And for some reason, just choosing a specific category. In this case, I just go with home and garden, but that gives better results than not choosing a category. But that's exactly what you should be doing. You should be choosing a specific category. And in this case, I just choose home and garden and then just click save. Save. That's all you want to do. And I'll be showing you guys exactly what to do once you find some products which are getting the most impressions, clicks, sales, etc. very soon. But on this page, these are the only settings that you need to really be focusing on because these are the settings which will kind of optimize your Google shopping feed. And if you don't know, Google shopping feed is basically everything when it comes to getting results. If you have a bad shopping feed, you don't pay much attention to it. Your settings are just all over the place. You're not going to get results with Google ads, period. And a lot of people don't even know about this. So just for that, again, smash that like button down below. But once you've set up this specific page, we want to move on to the next page now, and that is the Google shopping settings page. So if we go ahead and go on over to this page, there are a few changes we need to make on this page as well. The first change is this specific change right here. If your box is chosen for enable sale price, you want to uncheck this box. Basically, this just reconfirms that Google only sees your sale price. On Shopify, there is a compare at price and a sale price. The compare at price is higher than the sale price. Basically, the sale price is the discounted price where we're saying, oh, our items are 50% off, 60% off, etc. So what we want is we want Google to take our sale price, not our compare at price. And just to double check that that is happening, that Google is taking the sale price and not the compare at price, I just like to uncheck this box. And this is something I learned directly from the developer of this app, which is something he recommended that I do. So that is why I'm recommending this to you guys as well. But the second thing you want to check is the enable UTM tags. UTM tags basically help you track where your purchases are coming from exactly. And this is really beneficial on Google Analytics. So if you just want to be on top of the tracking game, this is something I recommend that you guys definitely do choose to get the best bang out of your buck. But on this page, these are the only two things I really need to be focusing on. But now let's refer back to what I was saying when you do find a specific product, which is getting you the most amount of impressions, clicks, sales, etc. So when it comes to that, that's when you want to go inside the manage product section over here and choose a specific category for and those products which are winning. So what I have done is on the manage products page, I've just chosen a specific product and that product 
is a sunshine flower necklace. And what I'm going to be doing is showing you guys exactly how to optimize the specific product, which is getting you the sales. And again, you only want to do this for those products, which are getting the most amount of impressions, clicks, sales, etc. because you don't want to waste your time on those products, which aren't even performing at all. So what you want to do is choose the specific product on the managed products page, scroll all the way down to where the category section is basically the Google product category. Now this is where we want to choose a specific category for this product, which is very, very relevant. As you can see, it says select the closest match for your product from Google's list of valid product categories. Basically, we're feeding Google the category which we want this products to be ranked against. So this product will only compete with those products within the specific category that you choose. So in this case, since it is a necklace that I'm selling, I would go ahead and go inside the category and maybe just type in the word necklace and just try to find the specific category, which is the closest match to my product. In this case, since we are selling the sunshine sunflower necklace, this would be the most closest that would be to our product. So that's exactly what we want to choose. In this case, the jewelry dash necklaces. And again, you can find a specific category by just typing in a very, very close related word to the product you're selling or maybe the niche that the product is in. And this is basically making Google's life easier as to understanding what your product is and who to show it to. When we do this, we're kind of just feeding again, feeding Google information to make it perform much better. And what I've noticed is after I supply Google with the category, it starts to perform much, much better. And if you want, you can set up all of these other details. I don't really do that. The main one is the Google product category and then scroll all the way to the bottom and just hit save. Once you hit save, it'll take about 24 hours for this to completely sync with your Google Shopping ads account. But once it's synced within the next few days, you should definitely start to see some results with the results that you're getting for that specific product. Again, the results aren't just determined on this. Of course, there's a lot of other things that determine what kind of results you get with Google Shopping ads like the image, SEO optimization, all of that stuff. Again, check out my free videos on Google Shopping ads if you want help with that. But for this specific video, we concentrated on shopping feed optimization. And again, this is one of the most important steps you need to take from the beginning to get the best bang out of your buck with the Google Shopping ads. But if you found any type of value in this video, smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time.